You're watching KCMI TV. Well, I'm glad you joined us tonight. And uh, tonight's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I think I want to talk to you some maybe out of my own life experience. And uh, hopefully at the end of our time together tonight, um, you will have better understanding on what God's doing with you. And so I, I want to read a couple verses. This is out of the book of John, chapter 12, and um, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, <clears throat> except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. This is Jesus talking. And he said, if any man, or verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. And then in verse 27, Jesus ends this passage with, he says, now is my soul troubled. And when we read these scriptures and we talk about dying and, and death and these type of things, uh, it does, it troubles us. It troubles our soul. And that's what Jesus said. He, he spoke it, he knew it, but he said, my, my soul is troubled. And so, I want to tell you a story uh, from the scriptures. I guess we could call it an analogy. But, um, and uh, I don't know, I guess I feel something in my spirit, so I, I'm probably a little emotional tonight. But years ago, hundreds of years ago, a man went into a field and he planted a almond seed in the midst of an orchard. And as time went on, uh, this, this almond seed began to germinate. And one day it, it broke out of the ground and began to grow. And as it began to grow, uh, life was in it. And as the almond tree uh, reached a certain stage and looked around, uh, he could see that he was planted in the midst of an almond orchard. And, um, he could look around and he saw a lot of trees that were mature and uh, these almond trees were beautiful when they would reach a place where they were going to bring fruit, there would be a beautiful white blossom that would begin to come on the branches. And then not long after that, there would be a red bud that would come in the middle of that blossom. And then after that, uh, it would begin to bring forth almonds. And so each year, this almond tree as it grew, it would watch what these trees did. And it wasn't anxious because the almond tree understood that it didn't bear fruit right away. It would take years for an almond tree to really bring forth fruit. But as this almond tree would uh, grow and they would look around, it was excited because he began to think that one day, I'm gonna be like these trees. And there'll come a day that I'll have branches that are strong and they will, at springtime there will be these beautiful white blossoms that will come on my branches and the red buds will come forth and then at the right time my tree will bring forth almonds and my master will come and he will eat of the fruit that I provide and he will be satisfied with me as a tree and the birds will come sit in my branches and so this almond tree would just dream about what was going to happen because he had seen it already happen in these other trees. 
So as time went on and the years went by and the springs would come, the spring came and the almond tree really felt like this might be the year that I bring forth fruit. He felt like I'm qualified, I've got the branches and I've been in the ground for a long time now and my roots are strong and he's excited and one day his master uh, walks into the into the orchard and he goes up and down the aisles of the trees and he stops in front of this young almond tree and the almond tree is thinking oh he's so excited about the harvest that I'm going to bring to him and he's going to eat of my fruit and the master pulls out a knife and in one swoop he cuts this almond tree off at the ground and then he takes the knife and he begins to strip this almond tree begins to take off his branches and the twigs and as the almond tree is in the hand of the master, he can't understand what's going on and the master takes this tree until it is just a rod, stripped it down bare, and then he took it and he laid it out in the sun and the sun began to beat down on this almond tree and as time went on, the almond tree could just feel the life ebbing out of him and the sun began to dry it out. As he lay on the ground, he's just, he's shocked because never in his imagination did he think that this would happen to him. He thought, I'm gonna be a great tree. I'm gonna make a difference. My master is gonna be proud of me and I'm gonna be like all the other trees and I'm gonna bear great fruit and people are gonna talk about how sweet my fruit is. And yet, without any explanation, the master comes in and just cuts him off. Doesn't tell him why and just lays him on the ground, stripped and bare. And the sun just begins to just take the life out of him. As this almond tree is, is laying on the ground, the tree's laying there and he thought, this isn't fair. Why me? I wasn't a bad tree. I wasn't diseased. I had all the potential in me to produce the almonds, what the master wanted. Why me? And yet he had no understanding as he lay on the ground when I read this story, he's laying on the ground and he's saying this, you know, all I wanted to do was bear fruit for my master. And as time went on and he's laying there and he, the life is just ebbing out of him, he begins to reflect and after a period of time, he begins to ask himself, did I really want to bear fruit for my master, or was this my dream? Was I really here for the master to be satisfied, or was I here because this is what I wanted? I wanted men to look at me and say, oh, what a great tree. My, I've never ate almonds like I eat off of this tree. And as he lay on the ground and time began to go, he, he's lame there and he's asking himself these questions. Was my greatest desire to bring my master pleasure or was my greatest desire to be what I wanted to be? Was it his dream or my dream? After a long time laying there, the almond tree finally said, I'm going to surrender to the will of my master. 
The master came and picked him up off the ground. And the almond tree found out that what the master wanted was a rod that that master could put in his hand and he could lean on that would help the master through rough terrain. And that almond tree reached a point where he said, if this is what my master wanted me to be, I'm going to lay down my dreams. I'm going to lay down what I thought I wanted. And if the master needs to me to be a rod in his hand that he can lean on, then I'm going to be a strong rod. I'm going to be the best rod that my master's ever had his hand on. So down through the years, this rod had all the life out of it. It was, it was tough now. It was seasoned. And it learned to recognize the, the touch of the master's hand. And it reached a point to where he was happy again because he realized, I have brought my master pleasure because this is what he wanted me to be. Um, one day, the scripture says that the master was Aaron, and the rod that was in Aaron's hand was the rod that used to be in the almond tree. And there came a day when a group of men began to question the integrity of little almond tree's master. And they said, he ain't the only man of God. We're like him. And the master had a brother named Moses. And Moses heard about it. And he went to the Lord, and the Lord said to Moses, he said, get all the leaders, all 12 tribes of Israel, 12 men, and each one of them have a staff, have a rod that they have in their hand. And he said, you tell all 12 men to bring their rod. You tell Aaron to bring his. And you bring them to me. So that day, Aaron picked up a little almond tree that had never bore fruit, had its dreams cut off in the prime of life, didn't get to be like everybody else, had never known what it was to, to bear fruit to where other people said, you satisfied my hunger, or the birds could sit in the branches and sing and find shade. And Aaron picked up this rod and he walked with the other men towards the holiest of holies. And when they got there, they gave them to Moses. And Moses took these 12 rods, including little almond tree, and he walked into the holiest of holies where only he could go. And he laid them down in this dark place, and he walked out. And there in the darkness, all night long, lay these rods. And in the middle of the night, this light began to shine into this place. And it began to shine on, on little almond tree that had never known the joy of barren fruit, had given up his dream, was satisfied that if all my master needs from me <clears throat> is to have his hand on me to get through tough places, then that's enough for me. And laying on the floor that night in the holiest of holies, the glory of God lit up that place. And the Spirit of God, the light of the Lord, began to hit little almond tree. 
And for the first time since it had been cut off abruptly by a knife, life began to come forth. And Almond Tree began to feel something that he had never felt before. And as he laid there, something unusual began to happen. And as he looked, he thought, what is happening? And the scripture says that branches begin to come out of this almond tree that would have taken years through the normal process to happen. That in a moment's time, branches begin to come out of this, this dry rod that has surrendered to the will of God. And as these branches begin to come out, the scripture says that all of a sudden, white blossoms begin to come. And out of the white blossoms, red buds begin to come in the center. And this little almond tree is feeling things and he's, he's seeing what he let die to surrender to the will of God. And then to his amazement, what was impossible what should have never happened, but only could happen in the presence of the Lord. He looked, and there God gave him back what he gave up for the will of the Lord. And the Bible says that almonds begin to grow supernaturally in a moment's time. And this rod, the scripture says, blossomed and budded and brought forth almonds because he stayed in the presence of the Lord all night. The next morning, Moses walked in and the only rod that this had happened to was little almond tree. And little almond tree made a statement with his fruit that came in a supernatural way, that my master is the man chosen by the Lord to be the priest. I don't think that Aaron took a knife to the rod. I think probably that that almond tree, in fact, the Bible says that Moses said this. He said, you take you take that rod, Aaron's rod that budded. And he said, you put him in the Ark of the Covenant, which was where the presence of God abided continually. In prayer, this morning I was thinking about this, and um, it's taken me a few weeks to be able to do this message. And to be able to do it, I felt like with justice, God will never let you be successful in his kingdom until you love him more than you love you. And it took time for the almond tree to lay in the sun and be stripped bare and be dried out before he could ever surrender to the will of God. Uh, I look back over my life as I know that as many of you are listening to me tonight, look back over yours. and um, I, For me, and, and a lot of you know this, I would, I would say in the last year, my, um, the rod budded for us. But can I tell you that God is no respecter of persons. And I think there's a whole lot of God's people that God cut off from their dreams, from what they thought God wanted for them. And he left you in the sun to dry out and you've never bore the fruit that you had thought that you would. Well, I wanna encourage you because as you stayed in the presence of the Lord, I got a feeling you're gonna wake up and find out Oh my God, something's happened to me. And out of death has come forth life. 
I want to encourage you in the Lord, those of you that are around the world and so many other countries that are struggling and you're locked down and so many precious believers, the ones that God leans on, sometimes he takes through the most difficult times of process and preparation. And I have a feeling that the almonds that came up on little almond tree in the holiest of holies probably were the best almonds that man had ever seen. God will not fail you. God will not let you down. And the pain that some of you are in because you still are trying to process, why would God do this to me? The Lord said this, he said, my thoughts that I have towards you are good and they're not evil. And I've learned this over time, that if I know I'm in the will of God, doesn't matter how painful that is, it's never gonna destroy me because my Father only has my best at his heart. And so you hold your ground, you don't get bitter against God, you don't say, Lord, it's not fair. Because at the end of this story, the only, only one that ever got to be in the Ark of the Covenant was little almond tree who surrendered to the hand of God. You be strong. You hold on to the Lord. And you know this. And as long as God's hand's on you, whether you're a blooming almond tree or you're a rod that's been in the process of sun drying out, as long as God's hand's on you, there will come a day. And the Bible says that those whom the Lord chastens, he bringeth forth much fruit. I love you. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord. Till I see you again, you let the Lord take his hand on you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.
Yeah.